Hello, world. This is CS50 Live, CS50's episodic show wherein we not only look at recent news in tech, but also explain it. This week's focus user error on a massive scale. But first, a look back at our earliest of seasons. Hello, world. This is CS50 Live. I'm Ramon Galvan, filling in today for David, who's lost his voice. Today, he'll be the Andy Richter to my Conan O'Brien. And of course, who could forget season two? CS50 Live first looks today at GitLab. GitLab is a popular core,、uh, source code hosting site, much like GitHub.com, that developers can use in order to store their code centrally, in order to version control it, save multiple copies, as well as share it with other users. Unfortunately, GitLab ran into a bit of an issue very recently, whereby the whole incident started. When they saw this, they support a feature known as snippets, whereby users can create snippets of code, much like GitHub Gists, whereby users can upload small snippets of code to share them with other people. Unfortunately, having some 1.5 million snippets of code created over the course of just a few days. Not normal. In fact, this seemed to be the result of some spammy behavior by some adversarial folks online. Moreover, GitLab also noticed that one or more spammers seemed to be using GitLab inappropriately as a content delivery network, or CDN, whereby they were serving up files in ways that they shouldn't. Now, unfortunately, these kinds of attacks resulted in a bit of a ripple effect on their back end databases. Particularly, GitLab posted the following We are experiencing issues with our production database and are working to recover. Now, unfortunately, just minutes later, did they post, we accidentally deleted production data and might have to restore from backup. Now, what exactly happened? Well, it's quite common for databases to be replicated from one to another so that you have a primary and a secondary, the latter of which is a backup of the former in real time. As part of the diagnosis a challenge for figuring out why the databases were slowing down in terms of this replication, one of GitLab's system administrators very deliberately executed a command quite like this. Now, what is this command? Well, at the pr- front of this command is sudo, which says execute the following command with administrative or root privileges. What is the command to be executed? Well, rm rf apparently. And rm, you might know, is to remove files or folders from a system. Dash r, though, means recursively. Delete the following thing recursively so that any directories inside of that also get deleted. And unfortunately, the f in dash rf means forcibly, which means don't even prompt the human. To confirm or deny that he or she wants to do this. Now, the system administrator meant to execute this command deliberately on their secondary database, db2.cluster.gitlab.com, so that they could resume then the replication from their primary to their secondary database. Unfortunately, it appears to have been late at night. This was a stressful situation, and darn it, if this command weren't executed on. db1.cluster.gitlab.com, the actual primary database. Now, no big deal. Surely we have backups all over the place, so we can just restore from backup and our customers will be perfectly happy and on their way. Unfortunately, out of five backup or replication techniques deployed, GitLab reported that none are working reliably or set up. In the first place. Indeed, if you'd like to read their whole, post,、uh, their whole postmortem in which they discussed exactly what went wrong and how, you can check out this URL here. But the moral of the story for our purposes is please, please beware the RM RF, especially if you're not just deleting some directory of your own, potentially your customers as well. In other news, you might have noticed that like, half of the internet went down recently, and somehow this was Amazon.com's fault. Well, it turns out that Amazon is not just the e commerce site that you might know and use, they're also one of the world's largest cloud providers, where cloud computing is this technique whereby other people can run servers and have hard drives and more services somewhere in the world, and you as a customer can essentially rent those services so that your website, your application isn't hosted by you in your own data center, but in Amazon or Microsoft. 
Microsoft or Google's own data center. Now, unfortunately, something went wrong with one of Amazon's cloud services, something called S3, Simple Storage Service, such that the result, according to one popular ISP called Level 3, was outages across the US, if not beyond, because these websites pictured here as this heat map were relying on at least one of Amazon's services. In fact, you might notice some familiar names among the websites affected Codecademy, Coursera, Docker, Jiffy, GitLab, GitHub, uh, Heroku, Imager, Kickstarter, Medium, Quora, Slack, Travis CI, and many, many more. In fact, perhaps best was the irony of a website called Is It Down Right Now? being down right now. This is a website that typically allows you to check if other websites are down. But if you actually visited that website during Amazon's outage, would you have seen an error like this? Now, fair is fair. Some of CS50's own infrastructure also went down during this incident. And that's because CS50 stores not only some of its largest video files, but also the data related to its video player on Amazon S3, the cloud service in question. So in fact, during that outage, if you tried to watch one of CS50's videos in its own player, you probably would have seen an error screen quite like this, because the video player, which is JavaScript or client-side based, wasn't able to pull the requisite data from Amazon servers. Now, what is Amazon S3 and what technically went wrong here? Well, at first glance, it's all pretty technical sounding. Amazon S3 is a simple key based object store, according to Amazon's documentation. Keys can be any string and can be constructed to mimic hierarchical attributes. But what does that mean? Well, let's tease this apart. It's a key based object store. Now, an object, in this case, just refers to files, where a file is just a whole bunch of bits. But Amazon kind of abstracts away the notion of a file. So there isn't really the notion of files and folders and all of that. There's just objects, which are, for, for all intents and purposes, files. But they are accessible via keys, which typically are strings, much like in a hash table, if familiar, you access some value by way of some unique key. So for instance, in CS50, we posted this first video from fall 2016 at this URL here. It's an MP4, which is a video file. Now it turns out that the video file actually lives on a server that's similarly named, but notice what's in it, cdn.cs50.net.s3.amazonaws. Dot com, which is to say that indeed within CS50's own CDN, Content Delivery Network, there's the data itself come from Amazon. Now, what about the key that uniquely identifies our objects or videos or other files? Well, this string here, which slashes and words and so forth, looks like a file inside of a bunch of folders. But that's fine to think about it that way. But it really is just a unique string that resembles a file path. We've adopted a scheme whereby it looks like these are folders simply because it keeps our, da our data nicely hierarchical. So what went wrong and what did users see? Well, if you visited Amazon's status page on the day in question, or the days prior to the days in question, you would have seen beautiful green check marks from February 27th on back, whereby all was well. Green check means good for the S3 uh, storage service. Unfortunately, on February 28th, did this thing rear its head. And suffice it to say, red icon bad. In fact, in this case, it means like half of the internet would appear to be down. Now, you can read more on the details of this story, but let's take a look at a few of the key moments. At 2.37 PM Eastern time on February 28th, did Amazon report this? We can confirm high error rates for requests made to S3 in the US, US East 1 region. We've identified the issue and are working to restore normal operations. Well, what does that mean? Well, US East 1 region is simply one of Amazon's data centers. Like a lot of cloud providers, they have data centers, buildings with lots of servers, lots of hard drives, and more all over the world. And US East 1 happens to be one of the most popular. It's physically no located in Northern Virginia in the United States. And because CS50 isn't all that far away in Cambridge, Massachusetts, much of our uh, assets live in US East 1 by choice. In fact, it's a trade off. We could absolutely replicate our data across multiple, multiple regions and have been much more tolerant against this kind of fault. But it's a trade off between how much storage you need, how much money it might cost, and how much complexity you have to introduce. So we very consciously put much of our data in US East 1 so that it's as close to campus as possible. Now, Amazon explained that the reason S3 became inaccessible, and in turn, so many of these customers, CS50 among them, went offline was as follows. The team was debugging an issue causing the S3 billing system to progress more slowly than expected. OK. An authorized S3 team member using an established playbook executed a command which was intended to remove a small number of servers for one of the S3 subsystems that is used by the billing process. OK. Unfortunately, one of the inputs to the command was entered incorrectly. 
and a larger set of servers was removed than intended. In other words, because of human error, literally a typographical error in the equivalent of a terminal window, mistyping a command, did Amazon take offline not just a few servers meant to diagnose some problem, but a huge number of servers, all of which then need to be rebooted. Which takes some time and which explains the downtime. You know, in the real world, this might be like if Amazon were hungry for a little bit of chocolate and so、uh, went over to the chocolate serving station and picked up this here e X Acto knife and just wanted to take a tiny little piece of the internet offline so as to enjoy some chocolate. And so you might just take off a little corner like this and mmm, that's a good server. But that's not what Amazon, in fact, did. Amazon, because of a mistyped command for which apparently there was not a sufficient prompting process to say, human, are you sure you want to take down all of these servers? Amazon effectively took out this here saw, turned it on, and bit off half of the internet. Now, hmm, that's good internet. But CS50, to be fair, is not immune to these kinds of mistakes. In fact, here on CS50 Live, we've made our own fair share. In fact, why don't we take a look now at some of CS50 Live's own outtakes? Hello, world. This is CS50 Live. <laughs> so if you see me trip, if you see me misspeak, if you see me screw up, all of that is happening literally right now in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Oh, hi, world. <laughs> Drum roll. Per, spec,、uh, per second. Pause the video if you'd like. Look, redder. <laughs> hey, but in what is Mark Zuckerberg's、uh, favorite patent to protect our nuclear missile? Keeping an eye, as usual, Google itself goggles. Good episode for you. It's actually quite、uh, ends. And whom you may recall, head to this. You are here. This is CS50. <laughs> and now I made the blooper reel. Fantastic. Should we redo the ending? How should we do the ending? <laughs> Photos of Jason Hershorn dressed as a pumpkin. Oh boy. I don't know if I want people to see no, that. No, now it's photos of Jason Hershorn dressed as a boy. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're interested, I can actually show you how I was able to get him to do that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> He's in l o c k balance this morning, hasn't had his coffee yet. Oh! Oh god. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> From where's he from? Right about right where my arm is. You can see like the white character. There's the、uh, pole. Like, and they don't know that it's the just one here. Oh. <laughs> can you hear me, world? Hello, world. Welcome to CS50 Live. I'm Ramon Galvan. And, and, and I'm David m a l i n And today I'm hosting today's episode. What with、uh, Okay, okay. <laughs> Don't say s on the air.、Oh, He'll be the Robin to my Batman, the Andy Richter <laughs> to my Conan, the Cheech to my Chong today. This is most definitely a serious thing that we're doing today. This is not a joke. Dropbox has made quite a fuss lately, but I know nothing about this. What is this about? That was all above me. And this is something I don't know of. We also took a tour of third glass. Third. <laughs> Right there. It allows you to swipe credit cards, unlike your iPhone, in order to process payments. I have a flip phone. Let's play the clip. <laughs> to host the first ever. What? To host the first ever. Okay. To host the first ever. <laughs> <laughs> I was in graduate school at the time. And I was in fourth grade. Although I love Samila, I would much rather not spend, spend half as much time with her. Exactly.、Yeah. Come on out, Zamila! <laughs> <laughs> this was CS50, and this was terrifying. This was terrifying. Made a nice little scissor reel to kind of encapsulate the debauchery that took place. I love you. Aww. I love you. Unlike David, who circles you. Where am I slide? Oh. That's it for CS50 Live. Thanks so much to CS50's whole team Arturo and Ian and Christian and Doug and Marina, Marinda, Dan Coffey, and Cynthia for our brand new set. This was CS50.